today we will learn about transportation the process of transportation of various substances in the body of the organism is accomplished by the transportation system transportation in plants let us first talk about the transportation in plants in plants the function of transportation of various substances takes place with the help of conducting tissue xylem and phloem xylem carries water and minerals while phloem carries food and other substances let us now see how water is carried by xylem tracheids and vessels of roots stems and leaves form a continuous network of water conducting channels in the xylem tissue this network is connected to all parts of the plant therefore there are tracheids and vessels in the xylem which transport water and minerals in the form of ions root cells actively absorb ions from the soil due to this there is formation of different ion concentration between roots and soil to remove this difference water enters in the roots from the soil and enters in the xylem due to steady movement of water in xylem it creates a column of water in it which is pushed upward to some height pressure developed by the cells of the roots through which water rises upward to some height in the xylem vessel is called root pressure similarly there is loss of water in the form of vapor from the aerial parts of plant which is called transpiration this evaporation creates a suction called transpiration pull due to which water gets pulled upward and hence it can reach various parts of the plants further transpiration also regulates plant temperature transportation of soluble products by phloem in plants transportation of water is important but at the same time transportation of soluble products of photosynthesis amino acids and other substances is also important the job is done by phloem the transportation of soluble products of photosynthesis is called translocation phloem consists of sieve tubes and companion cells the transportation of soluble products takes place in the sieve tubes with the help of adjacent companion cells in plants the transport of food takes place actively with the help of an energy molecule called atp present in the companion cells the soluble products produced in the leaves enter the phloem by using atp that is adenosine triphosphate due to which the concentration of soluble products increases in the phloem this creates osmotic difference between xylem and phloem to reduce this difference water enters from xylem to phloem this increases the osmotic pressure in the phloem water and soluble products move from high osmotic pressure to low osmotic pressure and are transported to different locations such as storage organs fruits buds etc keep in mind phloem carries substances both in upward and downward direction whereas xylem carries only in upward direction transportation in human being blood blood carries out transportation in humans blood is a fluid connective tissue which is made up of plasma and blood cells plasma carries digested food carbon dioxide nitrogenous substances and other hazardous substances in dissolved form while red blood corpuscles carry the oxygen there is a wide network of different tubes in our body through which the blood flows we call them blood vessels 
there are three types of blood vessels arteries veins and capillaries arteries carry oxygenated blood from heart to various parts of the body since the heart pumps the blood into arteries blood flows in the arteries with high pressure the walls of the arteries are thick and flexible so that they can bear high pressure each artery is divided into small vessels the wall of smallest vessel is unicellular thick this allows the exchange of substances between the blood and the cells easily capillaries join them to form veins that carries deoxygenated blood from various parts of the body to the heart the walls of the veins are thin and have valves so that blood flows in one direction heart the heart is a muscular organ that pumps blood into the vessels to prevent mixing of oxygen rich blood and carbon dioxide containing blood the human heart is divided into four chambers the upper two chambers are called auricles and the lower two are called ventricles let us see how the heart pumps blood when both the atria get relaxed and both the ventricles get contracted then from the lungs pulmonary vein brings oxygenated blood into the left atrium from the body parts the vena cava brings the deoxygenated blood into the right atrium aorta carries oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to various parts of the body similarly the deoxygenated blood in the right ventricle is carried by pulmonary artery to the lungs for oxygenation there is a valve between the atrium and the ventricle which prevents backflow of blood when both atria gets contracted and both ventricles get relaxed then the valve between the atrium and the ventricle opens the oxygenated blood gets transferred from the left atrium to the left ventricle and the deoxygenated blood gets transferred from right atrium to right ventricle the ventricle pumps the blood throughout the body so the muscular wall of the ventricle is thicker than the wall of the atrium the continuous movement of blood from heart to all the tissues of the body and from all the tissues of the body to the heart is called circulation since blood enters the heart twice in each cycle of circulation hence it is called double circulation birds and mammals have double circulation there are two chambers in the heart of fish for oxygenation the blood is carried to the gills from the heart and from gills the oxygenated blood is transported to all body parts thus in every round of circulation in fish blood enters in the heart once we call it single circulation animals such as amphibians and reptiles have three chambered heart for this reason some amount of deoxygenated blood gets mixed with the oxygenated blood lymph sometimes plasma proteins and cells present in the blood migrate from the pores of the capillary wall into the intracellular spaces of the tissue collectively the fluid is called lymph lymph is similar to plasma but it has less protein content and is colorless lymph carries the fat that is digested and absorbed by the small intestine and carries the extra fluid from the extracellular space into the blood the lymph enters the lymphatic capillaries from the intracellular spaces of the tissue the lymphatic capillaries from the lymph 
form the lymph vessels that open into the vein. Maintenance by platelets. When we get hurt, there are platelets in the blood to stop the bleeding from our body. These cells make a blood clot at the place of bleeding and stops the bleeding. So today we learned about transportation. Thank you.